An owner of a business will own shares in it. They'll be a shareholder and receive dividends in return for their financial investment. Whereas a director wouldn't have a financial stake in the company, but he would have the power to control it and to manage it on a day-to-day -day basis. But in this country, about 45% of the businesses are single owner, shareholder, director businesses and around about 99% of the businesses in the UK are small businesses with one or two directors who are also equal shareholders. So because of that, all of those directors need to be aware of their legal director's duties. Not necessarily um, a person may be working for the company and call himself a director as part of his job title but he wouldn't be a director registered at company's house whereas directors who are registered may not use the word director in their title. All directors of limited companies have legal duties which they must comply with. This includes all persons who are registered as directors at a company's house. And it doesn't matter what role they play in the day-to-day -day running of the business, if they are a director, they will have those duties and need to comply with them. All directors have seven general duties that they have to comply with. These duties are all owed to the company. The first is to act within his powers. These are the powers given by the company's articles the rules of the company and a director must exercise his powers in accordance with the reasons why the powers were given in the first place. So for example, if the articles say that a director can't purchase property for the company then he, he may not do so. The second duty is to promote the success of the company and this is the duty to promote its financial success for the benefit of shareholders and in a way that's fair to all of the shareholders. But in doing so, a director needs to take into account of other factors, including customers, suppliers, the long-term consequences of his action, the employees, the community and local environment, and to make sure that the business's reputation is maintained. Thirdly, to exercise independent judgment, meaning that a director can't do something that somebody else has told him to do and he must act in a way that he believes to be reasonable. And fourthly, to exercise reasonable skill, care and diligence. And that, the test for that is how a, a person with general knowledge and experience in the role would act. Fifthly, to avoid conflicts of interest and their conflicts as between the director and the company itself. The next duty is not to accept benefit from third parties, which is intended to avoid the situation where a director exploits his position. So he, he can't receive any particular personal benefit in return for doing an act in the name of the company. And the seventh duty only applies where the company has more than one director. And in those cases, a director who has a personal interest in any particular transaction that the company is going to enter into has to declare it to all of the other companies. They're all equally important and, and a director will find that in any given situation one or more of the duties applies. But they all must be complied with at all times. That depends on the status of the company at the time. The duties are owed to the company itself and so if it's still active then the company can take action against a defaulting director for consequences of his breach. But if the company is insolvent and a liquidator has been appointed, the liquidator has the power to take action against a director for recovery of any property or money that the director may have taken for himself from the company. Again, that depends on the nature of the breach, but typically if a director has taken a benefit belonging to the company, then he would be required to return or repay it. And if the breach is serious, the director may find that the director's disqualification unit will investigate him and may disqualify him from acting as a director in the future. 
We can help directors who are newly appointed to explain what their duties are and, and best practices for employing them. We can help advising directors when they're dealing in a particular transaction how to make sure that their duties are, are properly honoured and maintained. And where a director is facing a claim from a company or a liquidator, we can help working with them to resolve that issue. Although I would say that the sooner we're consulted in those situations, the easier it is to achieve a, a resolution.